So one morning, the clock in my living room stopped working. No problem, I thought. Just change the battery. But the next morning, the clock appeared to have stopped working at the exact same time, with the clock hands stuck at 4.23. That's strange, I thought. But maybe it's just something wrong with the clock hands. So I sprayed some WD-40 and put the clock back up. The next day, the clock still stopped at 4.23. And after plenty of head scratching, it turned out that a nearby avocado plant has gradually grown so much, one of the leaves was obstructing the clock hands, preventing them from moving forward. The reason why I'm telling you this story is because there's a sneaky setting on your television, which can harm picture quality without you even knowing about it. So to demonstrate, this is the same TV with the same picture settings, exactly identical as I scroll through the picture submenu. But once I exit the user menu, you can see that the image on your left looks drastically different from the image on your right. The picture on your left is dimmer, lacking in pop and punch, and shadow detail is also more difficult to see. So what's the cause of this discrepancy in picture quality, even though the picture settings are exactly the same? The answer is an insidious setting on your television, which is normally not even found inside the picture menu, so it is very easy to miss. Different manufacturers give different names to this particular setting, ranging from energy saving or eco mode to light sensor or ambient sensor. Despite being labeled differently, the purpose of this setting is exactly the same, namely to limit the power consumption of your television by adjusting its brightness based on the amount of ambient light detected by a light sensor on the display itself. However, more often than not, the result is a picture that looks darker than it should be. For example, on an LG C1 OLED TV with the latest firmware, SDR Filmmaker mode would deliver a peak white of 170 nits with energy saving step switched off, but only 92 nits in a dark room with energy saving step left at its default out of the box setting of auto, which is even darker than the SDR reference peak luminance of 100 nits. And you can see the difference in this side-by-side -side comparison of the 1080p Blu-ray of Skyfall where Bond met Q at the National Gallery in London. On our 48-inch LG C1 retail unit, peak brightness in HDR filmmaker mode measured 640 nits with relatively accurate PQ EOTF tracking when energy saving step was disabled, but would drop to 300 nits with a corresponding darkening of the entire luminance range if energy saving step was engaged, causing the HDR presentation to appear muted and lacking in HDR impact, with more crushing of shadow detail too. Here's the thing. This energy saving setting is switched on by default on most modern televisions due to energy regulations getting stricter and stricter all around the world. So TV manufacturers actually have to enable energy saving to obtain lower energy ratings before their TVs are even allowed to be sold in certain countries. But as you can see from the examples I've given above, Leaving the energy saving setting on will prevent you from experiencing the best picture quality on your television. Now, some people will accuse me of not being green-minded, but that's not true at all. I'm always trying to save the environment in other ways, for example by not investing in cryptocurrency. In case you're interested, this is the difference in power consumption between energy saving on and off on a 48-inch LG C1 OLED. Here, I'm displaying an SDR 50% grey pattern full screen in the out-of-the-box eco mode with energy saving enabled by default, and my power meter is showing a power consumption of around 61 watts. If I go into the picture menu and switch to the most accurate filmmaker mode, then go into the support submenu, click on OLED care, click on device self care, click on energy saving, then turn off energy saving step. Hopefully you can see that there's barely any change, perhaps even a slight drop in power consumption if you disable energy saving, as long as you switch to a more accurate picture mode. For an apples to apples comparison, 
Here's SDR Filmmaker Mode with Energy Saving Enable on the LG 48C1. Consuming roughly 54 watts of power when displaying a 50% grey pattern full screen. Again, if I go into the support sub menu, click on OLED Care, click on Device Self Care, click on Energy Saving, and then turn off Energy Saving Step, you can see power consumption going up slightly to approximately 60 watts, so the difference is only 6 watts. Assuming you watch TV for 4 hours a day, what you are saving over the course of one year by leaving energy saving on is the equivalent of boiling a full kettle for 3 times. So my advice is just to turn off energy saving on your TV, enjoy better picture quality for a whole year, and drink less tea. Because the energy saving setting can be a bit difficult to find, since it's not even inside the picture menu most of the time, let me show you how to disable it on some of the more popular TV brands whose TVs I have in my test room. In alphabetical order, LG. Long press the settings button on your Magic Remote. Click on General, then click on OLED Care. Click on Device Self Care, then click on Energy Saving. After that, set Energy Saving Step to Off, and once you click OK to get rid of the warning message, you should see the picture brightening back up. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Since the pandemic started, some streaming providers including Netflix have throttled the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. You can also get more content that is not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you'll get 83% off and 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I will put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Next, Panasonic. Go into the picture menu, scroll down and click on Ambient Sensor, then turn it off. For Philips televisions, press the settings button on the remote control. Click on Frequent Settings, click on All Settings, scroll down and click on Eco Settings. Click OK to get rid of the warning message, then click on Light Sensor to turn it off. Now on Philips TVs, Game Mode has to be done separately, so once you enable Game Mode, go into the Advanced Submenu, scroll down and click on Contrast, then scroll down to Light Sensor and switch it off. On Samsung televisions, press the home button on your smart remote, scroll left all the way, then click on settings, go into the general submenu, scroll down and click on power and energy saving, then you will need to disable brightness optimization. Note that depending on your Samsung television model, you may need to disable brightness optimization for each individual picture preset. As you can see here on this television where the setting was still enabled in movie mode, even though I have disabled it in filmmaker mode. Likewise in standard mode, you will have to manually turn off the brightness optimization setting despite it being disabled in filmmaker and movie mode, so just be aware. Last but not least, Sony. Press the settings button on the remote control then scroll right until you reach ambient light sensor. Just turn it off and you're good to go. Ok, now that you've disabled energy saving on your TV, perhaps you would also like to adjust 5 other settings to improve your TV's picture quality, as I've demonstrated in another video here.